So what I'm going to speak about today is this thing which is uh, paying all our salaries, right? Information, and uh, the, so much of it is getting generated every day, right? How do we leak? How, one view of information that I want to bring to everybody's notice over here is information as a tradable commodity, right? So what I'm going to uh, relate is this information which is getting generated, which is getting processed, which is getting deleted, which is getting transmitted and so on. How do we look at it as a tradable commodity and what it means for us really? Right. <coughs> so for those of you who've uh, seen the movie The Wall Street, um, there's a character over there called uh, Gordon Gecko. Right. One of his most famous lines uh, over there was this, the most valuable commodity in the world is it's information. Of course, in this case, he uses the information to defeat his uh, competitors, do digital espionage, uh, do insider trading, do various kinds of things. But it's a pretty profound statement and something which uh, might not be too far away from all our lives. And for those who are the more ethically inclined as far as back as um, 2000 years ago, uh, this is a, just a, something I pick up, picked up from the Bible, which says, happy is the man that findeth wisdom, for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver. Right? So 2000 years ago, Jesus Christ told us that information might be more valuable than silver. Right? And what we, are, what we are seeing today is that this is more and more and more becoming true. Right? So now before we equate information to a tradable commodity, right? today we have none as far as I know information exchanges, but we have a stock exchange, we have a foreign exchange, uh, exchange. Uh, we have a commodities exchange, but we have no as of now information exchange. Right? So let's look at what are the characteristics which define information or de which define commodities. Right? So first step, commodities can be created, generated, earned. Right? You can grow wheat. You can earn money. Similar to that, information or data can be generated. In fact, it's get, getting generated as we speak right now. Right? So every time I buy flight tickets, information gets generated. Right? Every time I visit a website, information gets generated. Or just by virtue of me having an idea, information gets generated. Right? So one criteria which is associated with commodities is that they can be created. Second, information can be stored and retrieved or commodities can be stored and retrieved. So you can store wheat in a warehouse, you know, money in a bank. We all know this, right? Data can be stored also. Information can be stored. Right? The third most important criteria is that information can be exchanged for other or commodities can be exchanged for other commodities. So you can exchange wheat for money. You can also exchange money for wheat. Right? It's tradable. You can exchange it for other services. Which is true for information also. Right? Just in case people here, I mean everybody here knows that there are enough and more examples of information being stolen and sold for uh, money. I've just credit card data thieves are one example. And while most of us might not really acknowledge it, that every time we use a free service, right? We use a free email service provider. We pro we use a free social network provider. Every time we use a quote unquote free service, we are actually exchanging information for that service, right? Fourth, and this is where the definition between a commodity and information starts diverging. So commodities can be destructed or consumed irreversibly, right? So you can consume or burn wheat, right? You can burn money also. You can just withdraw cash, burn it, right? Now this is something which is becoming more and more and more difficult today with information. It is becoming more and more difficult to destruct information or at least destruct it irreversibly, right? So let's look at various example. If it's a date, if it's a file stored on your computer, you go to that file, you press the delete button, it gets deleted, right? Maybe if you're if you're really worried, you'll clean up the recycle bin, you'll do all kinds of uh, new age tools, you'll clean up that information, right? Not so difficult. We move to the next stage. An email that you've sent to a friend, 
Now that is something which is more difficult to delete right. You can delete your copies. If your friend is good to you, you can ask him, he might delete your his copies, but there are all kinds of systems and you know servers that come in the middle and process this information right and this information gets stored in various systems in the middle. More difficult, but still possible. Online transaction details on a website. So, you go to a website, you buy a air ticket right. Now, look at look at the possibility of destructing that information irreversibly right. How easy do you think that is? Virtually impossible. By the time you move your mouse around, you press the click button, you enter your credit card details. By the time you have done this, so many copies of this information have gone to so many different entities. It is virtually impossible to destruct it right. And as the US government recently realized that destructing diplomatic cables is again a very, very difficult job. With all the might and all the power, you can still find with, a, with just typing a URL on your browser, you can still find all the diplomatic cables that such a great country has ever received a cent. Very difficult to destruct information today. The fifth and the most important piece of this puzzle is commodities can be owned right we somebody owns it money either an individual or a company or a country somebody owns commodities or it can be owned right now this is the most difficult part and that is the challenge that I am going to speak about a little more today which is defining and implementing ownerships of information right. So, if you look at any commodity right like money my money is my money right or at least that is what I thought till the time I got married right. But if you look at information as a commodity it is not always the case my information is my information that is fine, but it is also my bank's information and it is also my email service providers information and it is my cellular service providers information we just saw the video on sensing right how how information is being used to sense right it is my social networks information right it is my isps information it is my online shopping sites information and so on right so how do you really define and and control the ownership of this information that we are looking at so if you do a credit card transaction and buy an air ticket this information who does it belong to does it belong to you the credit card company the shopping site the actual vendor who does it who does this information belong to right this is this the ownership or implementation of the ownership of this information is one of the biggest challenges today which defines many things including privacy legislation right one of the biggest controversies that is happening today is uh, this whole thing about blackberry uh, you know data be getting blocked because citizens want privacy governments want uh, security and be able to uh, monitor what is happening inside the blackberry network and so on right so the challenge that we have today is that establishing ownership of information is an increasingly difficult task step 1 and not being able to establish it has significant inf impact on the way we behave right so let's look at some of the impact of not being able able to establish ownership of this information that we are dealing with right i don't know if uh, some of you might have visited this website called wikileaks right if you had and now the website is uh, significantly cut down but if you had visited it about 6 months ago you would have seen something which looks like this this is governor sarah palin's uh, yahoo mailbox so you can go to it all the dirty little secrets a lot of information contact books uh, private email addresses of all of um, governors of 32 states in the united states uh, all of her personal emails out there so this these are challenges which are faced by individuals in this case there are equal and more challenges which are faced by companies of not being able to exercise their right to this information. 
So companies in and this is just picking some of the cases, but if you visit websites like uh, dataloss.org, you will find millions of such examples where companies have lost information, lost money, have gone bankrupt because they have lost information and because they were not able to exercise their ownership and right to this information. Right. And of course, countries. So this, this uh, lack of ownership is not restricted to individuals or companies and groups. Whole countries have this inf have this problem. Right. So what is missing? Before you can trade it, trading by default is is about being able to transfer the ownership of a commodity for another uh, for some other commodity, right? But before we can start looking at trading and really uh, looking at buying and selling of information, we have to figure out a method to own it and truly own it, right? So one aspect of establishing ownership of this information is of course the legal framework. And there are many, many different countries which are taking different norms, uh, different uh, steps towards a legal method of implementing ownership of information. Right. Some of the countries, for example, uh, some states in the United States, uh, California very specifically, have a disclosure norms. So for example, if a service provider, let's say a bank, loses information about you, it should call you and tell you. Right. Looks pretty obvious, but believe it or not, very few countries and definitely not India has this norm. So if a bank in India, if your bank loses your data today, it is under no obligation to inform you that it has lost your data. Same is the case with telecom companies, utilities company, anybody who, who has access to your data is under no obligation to tell you if they lost that data. Right. So there is one part of the puzzle which is about privacy legislation, disclosure norms and so on. But there's, there also needs to be a technology framework around it. So there has to be technology which can persistently define and be able to authorize or control the ownership of information. And information could be SMSs, it could be transaction details, it could be your emails, your documents, any information. Right. So what is missing is a technology which can help individuals, companies, countries exercise ownership of this information, define its rightful use and destroy it if it is necessary. So it should be possible that if information that I own, you have, I should be able to retract it and get it back from you by legal methods. Just like if I steal your pen, you can go lodge a complaint and somebody will come to my house and take the pen away and give it back to you. Right? How about doing this for information? So, uh, so the idea that I want to introduce here is assume that such a method was available. Assume a method was available by which every piece of information that you rightfully own, your SMSs, your emails, the report that you are creating your work within a company, if, if it is owned by you or if it is owned by the company, whichever way, you had a method to persistently own it and be able to define how it is supposed to be used. Just like you can define uh, how your cell phone is used or how your pen is used. right? And be able to implement this technology universally. right? So what would it mean? Right? I mean, how would it impact our daily lives? Right. So what it would mean is, think about all the ways in which information that was never meant for one person has reached. Right. You just type the wrong email address or you sent it to somebody and you never meant it to send it to this other person and it's, you know, this other guy was not very careful. You gave your phone number to somebody and he or she was not very careful and he gave it to the friend you don't want to receive calls from. Right. You could correct that. You can define you could define what is the rightful use of that phone number that you gave to your friend. He can only use it to call you, but not be able to pass it to any, anybody else. Letters 
that you wrote to boyfriends worse if you are a boy yourself but right but le letters that you wrote long time ago could lead to embarrassment i mean once you remove the backhanded nature of the you know application but there are a lot of things which become embarrassing over a period of time relationships change not only personal but also business relationships change right information and research reports and proposals sent to customers which are sometimes misused right one one uh, uh, person uh, downloads a report and he sends it to all his friends frequently happens we are uh, it's a social uh, it's a social world and uh, people misuse that uh, social network you give information every time you apply for a home loan or a bank account or an insurance policy you give information to your home loan company and you have as of now you have no idea how the home loan company is using that information it is using that information to process your home loan but it is also conveying it to the bank which it is associated with so the bank can call you up and sell you the bank loan uh, or, or the bank account and it is also sending it to the credit card company right and some employees of that uh, insurance company uh, or the lender is taking that information away and giving it to a telecaller that's why you receive a lo lot of these calls but assume if that information that you have sent you could exercise your right to it so you could tell the lender the home loan company that i want you to use i want you to use this information only to process my loan and and nothing else not only request it but be able to actually implement and enforce it right pretty profound i think right so i'm i'm very lucky to be a part of a company which is uh, building which has built and is uh, building on a framework to implement this so what i can share with you is what the future holds so the what the future holds is a method by which information ownership can be exercised persistently through the life cycle of this information from the time you created a document to the time all copies of this document irrespective of where they are are deleted the ownership of that information right owners of this information could define rightful use so you give it to the home loan company only to process the home loan and not for anything else and you send a joke to the uh, person not to be able not for him to be able to forward it and you put a social media update not for somebody to copy it or uh, be able to take screenshots of it or do anything else right and at a later date be able to sorry at a later date be able to put to persistently destruct this information so you could send a document or an email to somebody and if you don't like the person anymore you could delete that document from wherever he stored it right to be able to define your world or the information world and be in complete control of who does what with this information when where right is a significant um, is a significant step towards governing and ensuring privacy security confidentiality some of the basic things which we value but are not very careful when especially when we handle other people's information right thank you thank you, thank you.